Okay, so we're Comp 308, and this is Week 3, Lesson 3, Part 3. Um, yesterday we did, we talked about um, wireframing. Uh, we did a little bit of logo designing for some of you who had put that together. Um, we talked about, but I wanted to try and hit those requirements for your assignment number one, help you out, try and get this done. Now, I know some of you still haven't started. Hopefully most of you have by now, right? Um, again, this thing is due next week on Friday night. Right, so it's um, it takes a little bit of time to put together, and we need to kind of do the different parts of it. It's going to test your knowledge of HTML5 and CSS3 a little bit, uh, but not a whole hell of a lot. The majority of it is going to be something that you can pull down from Foundation. Foundation has got a lot. It's a framework um, that makes you do things. Remember, that's a framework. A framework we ad adhere to a framework, right? by doing things differently than we normally would do things, right? Again, the difference between just a framework and an API is an API, we can use the classes and methods in an API, right? But we don't necessarily have to adhere to the structure, a certain structure of building things with an API, right? With a, with a um, framework, it makes us do things a little differently for us to use the framework. So foundation is, is a framework in that if we want to make it your website's responsive, we need to use the elements of the framework for it to happen. So you have to restructure our code. We have to create container classes and so on. Or we have to use the container classes to create our to make our code uh, responsive or make our websites responsive. So remember, this is the, like I said earlier, this is the kind of the heart of what we're going to start with. We're going to start with front end. Right? Our front end is responsive web design, which is really an emerging technology. Right? If we don't do things responsively, that means we're not hitting those mobile devices out there or devices with different viewport sizes. Right? So this is the main thing that we're going to start off with. Right? Um, and we talked about, like I said, um, wireframing last day. And today I'm hoping to hit uh, jQuery Essentials a little bit to talk about jQuery. But I also want to look at foundation again. Hey, there's another girl. I want to take a look at foundation again one more time because I think we haven't really taken a look at that. If I have to move things around a little bit, like I said, and do jQuery next week or Ajax next week before we head into um, WebSockets or MVC stuff, I will. I'll move things around. I don't mind. And the reason for that is because I know that some of you don't have the same level of experience with HTML5 and CSS3 as others. So some of you are very comfortable and others aren't because some of you may have skipped the HTML5 piece to get here, right? Because you can do that. So let's talk about foundation a little bit again. So again, I, you get foundation from foundation.zurb.com, right? And when we downloaded it, we downloaded the piece to make the foundation framework work to kind of initialize it. Uh, under the getting started, it tells us what to do, right? Um, we need to uh, really kind of define our 12-column um, grid here. And this 12-column grid is the stuff that makes our websites responsive. We're using the grid system with a, a flexible grid, right, that allows us to say, I want to allocate for this row, this row, 12 columns. I want to allocate for this row, see this box here, it's this whole row here, I want to allocate six columns to this half and six columns to this half. And you know what? I want to create a nested row inside this half of six columns and six columns. But everything adds up to 12. And this happens, the, this grid idea happens for every viewport size. So this might be something that the grid would look like in large, on a large screen, uh, desktop size, as an example. But this layout could be different for medium and small screens. And we do that by using the medium and small keywords, right? This idea here. We also have default buttons, which we didn't kind of go over, and some navigation. I want to kind of hit that with you a little bit today as well in this first part, this first hour, right? So let's do that. So again, I've, I've talked about my um, last week, or last day, I mean, I talked about my... Um, I'm just going to pull up my files here. And under my downloads, I have uh, my portfolio site. Here's my portfolio site. That's where I put it. And I created my wireframe, which is 
this document that I'm using uh, with um, balsamic, right? Now you can use your, you can make your wireframe off of um, anything you like. I'm using balsamic because it speaks to me. It makes sense to me to use this wireframe, right? So here's my first wireframe, right? And so on, right? Now with balsamic, I can, just like you can, I can export all my mockups to PNG or, to, or uh, the image to PNG, and I can highlight the image that I want to export. So I want to say this one here, all this stuff here. I want to make it, I can group it together, right? I can group it and I can export it um, if I go to export to, P, uh, to PNG image. I can do that. It says, would you like to export export everything or export selected? In this particular case, I'm going to export my selected, right? Because this is my wireframe for my desktop. So I'm going to call this, uh, that's the first piece, right? And this is where it's going. Users, Thomas, download portfolio site wireframe.ping, right? That's where it's going. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of scroll over here with my, uh, my, my, my kind of my mobile one, right? I'm just going to highlight this, all this stuff here. And I don't have a lot here, right? But I, I created some of the wireframes. I'm going to do the same thing, export ping image. and just the selected one. And it says, would you like to replace it or create a new file? I'm going to create a new file. And then I'm going to leave um, Balsamic, right? And I've got these two wireframes. I've got wireframe, which is desktop, right? I'm just going to rename it so you can see that I have them. And this one here is mobile or small, right? For small screens. So I don't have one for tablet. I could. I'm not going to do that right here, but you, sh you could, and if you should, if you're targeting tablet. Right, so here's my two wireframes. If I double click on one of these now, it'll, it should theoretically take me to fireworks if my system is working okay again. <clears throat> but maybe my system will stall like it did yesterday, which would be a bad thing. There it is. So this fireworks, so here's actually an image of my wireframe. This is what I want it to look like, right? So if you notice, if I was to go with the foundation idea and I want to assign my object here in the middle, right, I have actually, um, I have to break this down into almost like a thinking problem, right? So here's my row. I'm just going to use um, a, a rectangle to define my rows. So here's my row, right? This is my first row. And if you look at my row, I'm just going to make this transparent for a second. So we're just going to take the element out of there. And I'm going to highlight my uh, the background color for my row in red. And I'm going to increase the size of my um, my border so it's very thick. So right now I'm just highlighting it for you. So this is my first row, and if you notice, my first row contains a bit of my uh, my logo, right? Here's a bit of my logo, and it also contains. If I was going to do my row here with my with my uh, uh, design, right? Would I capture everything? This is my row, right? I would kind of my my logo is kind of hanging out here, right? So I I can't really do this. I can't put my row, my outer row, this way. This would have to be, my outer row would have to come down to here, so to speak. And I would have two rows, right? Another inner row that go, would go in here, right? And plus my outer row out here. That's one way I could do it. Or, or, I'm just going to create this in a different color now. Maybe make it, yeah, I don't know, yellow. Just to highlight. Oop, that's the wrong thing I wanted to do. <laughs> I meant I wanted to get a new object with a, a yellow color. But let's just use red for now and then I'll change the color after. So I want to go from here to here. This this part of my row, there's a certain number of columns here. Let's just change the color to yellow. Right? And um, I'll make the uh, thickness a little bit less so we can see what I'm talking about here. Right? And I want to do the same thing. I want to take the same thing, copy and paste it, and move it over. Right? So this is the other piece of our row. Right here we are. So this is our row. This is a certain number of columns in our row. Not all of them, obviously. This is a number, of, uh, another uh, certain number of columns in our row. And then there's some other ones that are left over here, right? So if I copy and paste, and I kind of move it across again, 
That's not what I wanted. <laughs> I want to, and I'll undo that again. I want to copy and paste this and move it across. And obviously, it's not going to be the same size because I don't have all that space. I'm going to make it smaller. So I have three columns that I need here. One, two, three. And if you notice, if this was approximately the same, I would say, just eyeballing it, right, without looking at the numbers down here, right, that this column and this column probably take 8 out of 12 columns. So these two columns, this is maybe 4, another 4, or maybe this is another, uh, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe this would be 5 and 5, and this would be 2. Or maybe that would be something like that. So these are pretty much even. These two columns are even, 5 and 5, or 4 and 4. And this would be either 4 here, doesn't make sense, or this is 5 and 5, which makes more sense. To allocate 5 columns in this row to this part, and 5 columns to this part, and only 2 columns to the middle. Right? If that's true, this is how I want to partition my, my code. So let's go back over to um, Visual Studio now and do it. Right? So I've got my, I'm going to just close my solution. I was working on another class. And I'm going to launch Visual Studio again and choose our solution that we used yesterday uh, where we made our, or the other day when we did our foundation. If I can pull that up. Um, again, you know what? Why don't we do it from scratch? That might be a better thing to do. Or I can also pull it down uh, from my, um, just want to make sure if I didn't do a foundation thing for you guys in Comp 308. That was Lesson 2, and I think Lesson 2 had our our foundation um, idea here, right? Comp 308, but it only has a index, let me see. Sorry, just want to make sure I get everything proper for you. That's not where I want it. I want it to have a foundation framework. And I do have a foundation demo, but that's from last year. I'm going to have to create a new one, which is fine. Right. I also have it online, by the way. So if I'm, let's say I have a doubt of where it is. The great thing about having our, our GitHub here is I can always go to my, my account, go to my repositories. I'm not, instead of searching it out, I don't want to search it out. So I'm just, just against that right now. <laughs> and here's my uh, 308 Lesson 2 Part 2, right? Uh, which is probably where I've got foundation, or 308 Lesson 2, which is down here. So let's take a look at down here. And here I've got, um, I'm using GitHub and part two, lesson two, part two, which is probably where I have my stuff, is where I have the foundation stuff. And I don't have it there either. So I probably call this something like foundation demo or something like that. But why don't we do that? Why don't we create a new one so like you've never seen it before and just kick off the foundation thing again, right? I don't mind doing that. So let's just go with new repository and I'll, cut, I'll do a comp 308 foundation demo, right? And this, actually what I'll do is, that's fine. And I'll say a new repository. And now that I've done that, I'm going to have to create a new folder. So we'll do this all again. New project. So I think we did a wireframe yesterday, but I want you to see how to apply them, right? How do I take our design and then attach it to... Um, my templates, right? So again, I'm going to use an empty web uh, template here. I'm going to call this uh, Comp 308 uh, Foundation Demo. I am going to attach to a Git repository and press OK. It's going to be a new empty uh, type of uh, site. And when I create it, here's my Solution Explorer. There's nothing really there. I need to create my framework. So I'm going to do that really quickly. And if you follow me here, you can do it together with me. So I'm going to go new folder, I'm going to create a CSS folder, I'm going to go new folder, okay, uh, new folder, I'm going to create a scripts folder, that's where it's going to go right now. And normally for what I want you guys to do, I want you to add a new folder, right, for your assets. I like you to keep your assets separate, so your assets, and maybe inside your assets folder, I want you to put images for sure for now. I don't have any audio or anything else or fonts. We will need that though, so we'll go add new folder fonts. Let's put that as, as one of our asset areas. And add 
if we just had any kind of audio, I would put it in here, any kind of multimedia or whatever. I don't, I'm never going to have audio, so that's going to be empty. Uh, my CSS is cool. In my scripts, I want to put my new library, so add new folder lib for library, right? So I'm setting up my files. Inside my demo, I want to add on index.html file, right? So here it is, index, right? And that's going to be my index file. I'm going to change this just so we get right, right back to where we need it to be. Uh, it's going to be lang of English, right? And my meta tag here, here's my meta, character set to, to adhere to the um, HTML5 standards. I should put something in there for uh, viewport, right? As well as... Um, as well as my character set. So I've got these things that make me adhere to the doc, doc type HTML. Remember, we talked about this, is telling me that it's of type HTML5, right? That's what, we're, that's what the new doc type, right? Here we're going to do our um, foundation demo, right? And we're going to do this for comp 308, right? So that's going to be our title for this particular thing. I'm going to put a section in here. Right for CSS, right, and inside the body of my document, I'm going to put a section, right, for JavaScript. I'm going to need to do that too. Also, because we're doing our foundation, we're going to put some script tags in here, uh, or our, our wrappers to create our foundation site, or our, our um, responsive site, in here. Okay, cool. So we've got this part. Um, I've got this part. I really don't have CSS yet, so I'm going to go into my CSS and I'm going to create a uh, <clears throat> new style sheet. I'm going to call this app.css, right, for my app. We're going to do this again and again. And my scripts, I'm going to go, I'm going to add a new uh, JavaScript file called app.js, right? And I'm going to attach these things right now into my my uh, my CSS section, which is here, and my JavaScript section, which is down here. So I've done kind of the basics for my uh, code. And now I want to attach in my Foundation 5 framework, and I have it already downloaded. But if you haven't downloaded it, I'm just going to go into Foundation. I'm going to go into Date Modified. Hopefully we find it that way. Here's Foundation 5.4. I want to find Foundation 5.5. One of these folders is 5.5. There it is. In my Foundation 5.5, I've downloaded. Now let's go and do that. Let's let's pretend we didn't download it. How do we get it? Well, we have to go to foundation.zurb.com, and inside there, we're going to click on Download Foundation 5. There's different ways to do it. You can download the complete amount of stuff, the essentials, your custom stuff, or your SAS. Right? You can do these things here. And another way to do it, if you don't want to do it this way, right, is you can do it right through. You can do it right through uh, Visual Studio because Visual Studio knows about Foundation. You can go to Tools. There's the other way to do it, right? Um, NuGet Packet Manager, manage NuGet packages for solution, right? And then here I can type in Foundation. And if I've typed it correctly, it's going to take me and find. Potentially, Foundation 5 would be in here. If I can't, I'm going to type in Foundation 5 for a second. Okay. So it says, I've got Foundation 5. And if you notice, it's a little little icon from Zurb, right? Now, there's different ways I can do this, right? It says, I can do Foundation 5 for sites, just the core files, right? I can do Foundation sites um, work for MVC with SAS. We're not going to do that. That's just later on. We're going to hit MVC in the next couple of weeks. So that's not going to be it, right? Um, here's Zurb Foundation 5.5 for MVC without SAS, right? And we don't know what SAS is right now. We haven't talked about SAS. Uh, but for now, all I need is this core files, right? Now, if I just say um, install, what Microsoft and NuGet Package Manager will do will download the latest version of Foundation and install them inside my site files. It puts them in where? My scripts library, right? This is what it does. It also creates this new content, um, this content folder, which we're going to not use. 
right? But it does put them in my file. So instead of me having to go and download everything and whatever, all my stuff for foundation is here, right? I'm not going to leave it in here. I'm going to leave this here the way it is, right? Because these are all the foundation files, right? So I could I could use this, right? Any one of these things. So if I only wanted to use piece parts of the foundation framework, I could. That's what this allows me to do, right? I just wanted to show you how this is done, just in case you say, Tom, you never showed us how to do stuff through NuGet Package Manager. This is the way to do it. I do, however, have a normalize.css and a foundation.css that I'd like to use, these two things, right? So the first thing I'd like to do is put in my normalize. So here's my normalize, because what that does again, and this is the wrong location, let me just undo that. I want to take my foundation and my normalize and throw them into CSS where they should be, right? Because I don't want to leave them there. Content doesn't make any sense for me. I'm just going to erase that thing. That's what just NuGet gave me. It gave me a structure. I don't need to accept it, right? Now I'll do it. So I say I need my normalize to go before my app and before my app as well, app.css, I want to put in my foundation CSS. Again, remember what normalize does or reset.css, they're the same thing. It normalizes or takes away any styling that's part of the browser because each browser itself, itself has default styling. So Firefox has, has its own default styling. Internet Explorer has its own default styling. And I want to I neutralize those styles so that way there's no effect. And <coughs> most designers will do that. Otherwise, they're going to get a different result from using their CSS. So it's a nice, it's a good practice to do. So normalize or reset your CSS and then use your, your, your framework and then finally follow it up with your own custom CSS, which is going to be my app.css. I haven't designed anything there yet, right? But for now, I'm putting it in as a placeholder. For my app, my app.js is going to be my last file, right? But I want to include my some scripts from the foundation library. And if you notice, it shows all these different things, right? One thing I was hoping that it would give me is foundation.min. So this is the full unminified version of foundation, which is just as good. I have no issues using this. There are advantages to using this unminified version, though. The advantage is I get code hinting when I use it, right? So let's, let's see how that works. So if I do this, I go back. I'm just previewing it here. If I go drag this full foundation.js file, into my files, it's going to go before my JavaScript files. Right here it is. Now I got to call my foundation framework. And in order for me to do that, if you remember how it works, is I got to go to my app.js, right? Here's my app.js. First I'll save everything. I'm going to call my app.js file right here. And I want to make a reference, pass a reference to the foundation library. That I, that I threw in there. And here's my foundation library here. I want to throw this foundation, a reference to this library here on the top of my file, this reference path. Now I can access foundation, right, by calling it. Okay? So this is the one thing I want to do. Now, if you notice, if I go back to my uh, documentation for the foundation framework, right, so here's my docs. It talks about getting started. So if you forget how to do all this stuff, it talks about this, the, the grid and how you can, uh, different plugins you can add in there and you can test drive the foundation by downloading it and so on. But let's suppose that you forget how to do stuff. Well, you can go through after getting started. It'll talk about um, how you can set up your CSS. As an example, you can download the foundation CSS separately. Um, if you're a SaaS person, you can do that. We're not going to talk about that. Um, we can talk about the JavaScript, right? And how in the head of the document, they recommend you put Modernizer in, in, in FastClick uh, because both of those frameworks, uh, what they do is they, um, uh, what they do is they check to see if your, if your browser supports certain functionality. In this particular case, we're going to assume that it does, right? And if you notice, this is how we do it. We, we have our, uh, you can do the whole foundation framework here right? Or you can drag stuff in individually, the JS, the alert, the JS, and everything else. I personally think the best and the safest way, if I was going to do this, um, is to drag in the minified version of Foundation for the whole library, if I was going to use it, 
and use the other piece of foundation for um, uh, for my uh, my code hinting, right? So again, what I would probably do is add both in. So this is the one way to do it, and this is individually. This is what I was doing here with foundation, my core files, right? So I want to use the stuff that I downloaded, which is here. I'm just showing you that NuGet Package Manager, you can get a lot of files. If you want to download Angular, Bootstrap, um, mm -hmm. CreateJS, if we're doing gaming, all that stuff is available through NuGet Package Manager. Many, many, many libraries you can download without searching them out on the web by going through NuGet Package Manager. In this particular case, I also want to add in a couple things that my NuGet Package Manager didn't give me because it just gave me the core files, right? I want to add in my humans and robots text, which is good for SEO. So I'm just going to go back here and launch this. And I'm going to do some modifications here in a second. You're going to see. See, I, I connected my files to foundation.js, but we're not going to do that in a second. Here's my, um, my humans and, and robots. I'm going to pull these text files into my project level. So humans and robots. And if you ever look at these files, let's take a look at these files really quickly. Huma, humans tells me, hey, this is what this, where this site is, is made from. So I probably want to talk about, um, you know, how I made my site in here. And here's some, this, this text file is basically identifying to, um, uh, to SEO, search engine optimization, that this site, right, is not created automatically, randomly by some robot. It's made by me. Right, and you can put your name in here and everything else. That's what this humans.txt is. And the robots.txt is, it says, if you're a robot, then um, I want you to look at this as if, um, you know, uh, this, is, this is the information that I want you to go to when it comes to if you're a robot. And again, both those things, humans and robots.txt are for SEO. We're not going to go into it. It's outside of the scope of what we're doing here in this course, right? But it's not wrong to include them either. Let's include them. Then if in my, the code that I downloaded, this is the foundation 5.5 that I downloaded right from the site, from the GitHub files. Um, if I go into the JavaScript section, I have my foundation, my minified version of foundation, which I want to pull into my library, which I've just done. And this is the version that I want to connect to when I actually do my file. All right, so I like this path, the foundation path up here, to, uh, in order for me to understand my code hinting. My code hinting will come into play here, right? But I want this minification, minified version of my foundation to get my full scope of all the entire library, which is what I want to use right now. I don't want to kind of scrimp on what, what part of the library I'm going to use for now. So this line here is incorrect. I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to throw in the foundation.min.js file that goes here. So now, now I have access to the entire foundation library. I still haven't kicked it off, though, because remember, if I go back to my docs, for foundation, it says, this is what I need to put in my HTML, and to initialize foundation, I got to use this script. I can do this in my HTML, or, right, I can also take this, right, this, and throw it into, um, I can take this and throw it into my um, my files, my, my app.js file. Okay, so I could do it this way. And I could do it the other way. I've done it the other way before. Let us do, and it says you can also do this after page load, right? I can put this in my own file, right? So I want to take this document.foundation and initialize it in my app.js file. Well, in order for me to do that, I should probably create some kind of main function or initializer, right? So I'm going to say function init. This is JavaScript. And inside my function, I'm going to go, I'm probably going to call document dot foundation if it's available to me and if you notice it's not coming up oh one thing I need to do is put a jQuery in here sorry if I can't if I don't do that I'm in trouble right so I need jQuery has to go before foundation.min.js right now there's two ways to pull in jQuery I could do it through tools right I can go into um, NuGet package manager let's do it that way first and if I go type in jQuery, right? And by the way, it already it was already there. Here it is, right? Here's jQuery. I want to pull that in. I can click install, and NuGet Package Manager will grab it and install it inside my files. 
right? So jQuery is part of my files now, but I haven't connected jQuery anywhere. And by the way, it puts all these things outside here. IntelliSense, there's the, the, the JS, full JS version, and then there's the minified version plus a map. Well, I want to collect my, my minified version to, to my files, and it's got to go before foundation. So jQuery, then foundation, and then my app. And just to, in, to make sure that I understand, I can pull in my IntelliSense file so I get my IntelliSense for jQuery. Okay, now if I type document.foundation, I should be able to find it. If I don't, right, again, it's because, let's take a look at back, go back to, sorry, go back to my documentation here, right? Oh, of course I didn't do it right. So if you don't remember, it's okay. The documentation is there for you to use, and I recommend you RTFM, which is read the fine manual, which I did not do. So document, I'm using jQuery. I'm, so, I'm using a selector called, uh, I'm going, uh, you know, again, foundation, right? Oops, go back there. All right, that kicks it off right there. That's, that's going to initialize it, right? I should be able to see it, though, in there. So if I can't see this, it's because I haven't saved it properly or because my foundation.js doesn't specify that I can do it. I don't have a, my, proper, my reference isn't proper for that. For example, I should be able to do, you know, um, when I do this, my jQuery, and this is why I don't like this jQuery IntelliSense file. Let's pull in my jQuery.min to see if it does it now. So I'm not even getting jQuery right now from an IntelliSense perspective. That's good, right? Still doesn't find foundation. I love it. Well, I just got to pull in the right uh, reference, right? And sometimes these other references, no matter how much we love them, right? They don't work properly. They don't work properly. What are you going to do, right? Of course, I'm pulling found foundation as opposed to foundation. <laughs> that might be an issue issue as well, right? And it should be this. This should be enough. This shouldn't error out for you. This document F foundation. Right? I'm still not getting the code hinting that I want, right? which means that I'm not getting the proper library referenced. We'll fix that. Okay, so I got my library, I got my, my jQuery, my foundation, my app. Um, I'm calling it my app, but I want to do this on load. So I say on load, I want to call my init function from my app. That's what I want to do. And if all goes well, right, I should be able to call my foundation and it should work. Now, in order for me to make foundation work, I need a wrapper for my for my for the body of my document, right? And it's got to be in a div tag, and it's got to have an um, <clears throat> a class of row, right? Okay, so my wrapper has to have a class of row. If I go back to the docs, here's my docs. So after I've put this stuff in here, I can do this document.foundation. Um, it tells me about the configuration. I can put more configuration data in here. But now really what I want to do is set up my grid. So if you follow this step by step, right, I need to set up my grid. And it tells me how to do that. If I go to grid for my structure, my basic site structure looks like this, right? So here's my HTML. And then I have my row. And I have my uh, different... Um, div tags, other container classes, other containers. But if you notice, all of these have to, should add up to 12. All right, should. Now, if you notice, some of this does not, right? Like two and four, well, this actually does. Two and four is six, and six is 12, small. Four and four is, uh, is eight, and four is 12, large. So in these, in this uh, container, in this row, right? There's many rows here, but then this row, we're using all 12 columns for both large and small screens. In the second row, we're using all 12 columns, but only for large screens, right? So we're only defining them for large, which means for small, they're going to take the default value of piling one on top of the other. That's what it does for default, right? And so on. So these are all different rows, and this is the what it's going to look like, right? Here's the rendered HTML of what it looks like. 
And it talks about, inside the docs, it talks about what small looks like. Small grid expands to large screens, easier than large grids cram into small screens. So sometimes defining it just for small first, right, works better uh, than defining it for large going to small. Show me. This one, right? Yeah, so what this is saying is you've got um, 2 and 8 is 10 and 2 is 12, and this is probably some kind of uh, typo. You can't do this, right? You can't have 6 and 6. Otherwise, you'd have to nest them, and this isn't nested properly. You'd have to have another row in here, and then you can do this properly. So this is incorrect, as far as I know. Because if you notice, there's no example like that here. But this uh, small grid is a good example of what it tells you. The medium grid, again, it says medium-sized screens will inherit styles from small unless you specify a different layout. So small and medium, it'll inherit. That's why sometimes you only see large and small, and you don't see large, medium, small, or medium and small. right? It really depends on the type of uh, response you want from your, um, from your design. Okay, So I know that in my, to, to hit my response, I need a, an outer row, right? And for my first column, or for my, for my first row, I want three columns divisions, right? For my large, I want five, two for my, for my logo, and five. That's what I want. So I'm going to create three divs. So my first div, right, is going to have a class of uh, large, right, um, five, uh, ID large five columns, right? That's what my first div is going to have, right? Here it is. And my second div, my actually my third div is also going to have that as well. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in here. Same thing. So there's five and five. And then for my logo, right, it's going to have a class of uh, large two columns. Right? So this is where my, my actual logo is going to sit in here. Right? So I got my left and my right, and my left and my right is going to have these, um, some, some of my, nav my navigation is going to be split. That's what I want for my left and my right. And I haven't defined what it's going to look like on small. I could do the same thing on small because I want the same division. Right? And if I was to do that, so instead of large, I said small. What they say is, oh, look, now I'm getting, I'm getting my. Uh, um, my code hinting. This is good. I wasn't getting this last week, right? Um, what I want to do is I want to, it's better, sorry, it's better um, to, sorry, to use small because small and in, large inherits from small. Now, if I go back to, if I go back to here, if you notice, each one of these has two classes. The first class is the small dash two, and the second class is columns. It says I want to this. I'm, I'm affecting the columns class. I'm assigning a number of pixels for each of my columns, depending on the number I put, large two, small two, whatever I put in. And that's what the the uh, the, the JavaScript does for the framework in the back end. I'm not touching the JavaScript. The JavaScript is reacting because I'm marking up my content with the framework's classes. That's what I'm doing. Right? Let me go back here. So this is what this thing is. So I've got my structure for my first row, right? Or my, and that's my first row. I can make as many rows as I want. But this first row is going to be where my logo lives, right? Well, I want to put my logo in here, right? I don't have my logo in my images, so i got to kind of populate that in there if I'm going to make my site for the first time, right? So I'm going to go to Downloads, and I have a Portfolio Site section somewhere. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, refresh and do that. Here's my portfolio site. Right? And you know what? Just to make it easier for us as we move forward with this, I'm going to make it a favorite of mine. I'm going to put that underneath my GitHub so I can always get to it. Right? Here's my portfolio site. And I know that 300 is too big because when I did my wireframes, I noticed that 300 was way too big. Right? And because I'm doing small, because I'm doing small, I'd like to use my Tom logo of 75 pixels, right? For now, uh, let's just use the, the 150 pixel one, and I'll tell you how to change the pixel size. So I'm going to put both images in here. 
So here's one, 150, and here's my Tom logo for my my 75. So I've got two logos in here, one that's 75, one that's 150, different sizes. For now, even though it's this small, I'm going to pull in my 150 so we can see what it looks like. Right? So here's my logo. Okay? Now I've got nothing on the left, but I need to pull in some kind of uh, navigation on my left and my right, because that's my, what my design tells me to do. Right? For now, I'm just going to put in some whole, a placeholder text. So I'm going to say, um, <clears throat> this is where my uh, uh, some navigation, so left nav goes here, right? And I'm going to go in here and say right nav, right nav goes here, right? That's what this is doing, right? So if I save this and if I run this thing, as long as I'm good and if I haven't made any mistakes or errors, I should see that, all right? So here's my left nav, here's my right nav. And here's my logo in the middle. Place it, you mean? Oh, for, for place for this one? Sure. So if you don't want to use my uh, my logo, right? Because you don't have it, you can use your own, right? But if you want to use a placeholder, so I'm not going to use my logo. So let's get rid of it. I can use, there's a couple of things. I can go, uh, I can go place. Right, place dash uh, 150, right, and when I do that, let me just go down here. Or uh, I'll say, sorry, pix. I'll say pix dash 150, right. And if I do that, it'll give me a lorem pixel placeholder of 150, right. Uh, place it will also do the same thing, but I got to specify. If I go to specify the 150 by 150 again, right. Place hold it is another way to do it, right? Both images will do the same thing. And now when I save it and go back to my site files and refresh, then it'll give 150 by 150, right? That's what you want. Place dash 150 by 150 and then tab. And then it'll do it then. It'll put it all automatically in there. If you don't have uh, Zen coding, if it's not working for you, um, then it's this. Image source equals to HTTP colon four slash four slash place hold dot it forward slash the size 150 by 150 with an alternate uh, text of nothing. You can also just type it manually. All right, so that's where my logo is going to go, but I've got a bit of an issue, right? The issue is both my left, my text here on the left, and my right, and even my logo, right, the, the stuff in here isn't centered. It starts on the left side. Of my of my column, the leftmost portion of my column. If I want it centered, then I can put in. I mean, I can start typing. And if I look at centered, right? If I say text center, that's cool, right? But if I want, um, if I start typing centered, my code hinting will say there's a couple of ways I can center this. I can go small centered, right? So centered for small only, small screens, right? Here's small centered, and I can do the same thing. It's different than text centered small centered, right? So I can add that class in there as well. So that's the third class um, I'm adding in there, right? So small centered. And if I save it now and I run it, I replace it, right? You'll get a different effect, right? Which is not what I wanted. I don't like it, in fact. I wanted the, the image to be centered. Well, actually, it is centered, but these things are centered too which is not really what I wanted. So let's go back. Again, these are classes that I'm applying things to it. And I could go, instead of small center, I could say uh, a text center because it's going, to be, it's going to be some kind of text right now. I only have text. I don't have another thing. That's what might, might, might be causing the issue right now because it's just placeholder uh, text. I could also go text right, uh, you know, and so on. Code ending is telling me that it can happen. And if you notice, this is down here and this is over here. Um, and the reason for this is because of the number of columns that I'm and how I'm, I'm flowing my text. Not to worry though. Okay? Not to worry. If you don't know, if you can't see the columns and you want to turn that on, right? How do I do that? 
Anyone have an idea of how to, if I wanted to turn on, let's say, a border around this stuff, so you can see my, my rows, anyone have an idea what I could do? Could make a border, right? But border won't do that exactly what you said. I want to probably do it in my app to, in my app.css. So let's just stop um, debugging. I'm going to go into my app.css, and also for me to do that, I probably want to name, um, you know, this stuff here, right? I could say that all divs, every div, has a border around it, right? That's definitely one thing I could do. And then that when I start typing, every div that I create will, will show me the containers, which is probably what I want for now. So I want to target every div. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to go in my app.css and just say, instead of the body tag, I'm going to say the div tag, right? And inside my code block, I'm going to say, I want to create a border, right, for my div tag. It's going to be one pixel. Uh, okay, I'll make it... I'll make it uh, I'll make it dash, sure, one pixel black, right? And when I do that, it'll make a dashed border around every div. This targets every single div tag in my, in my, my files, right? If I run it now, I have to actually start running it again, or else it won't run. The IIS uh, stuff won't work uh, until I do that, right? And sometimes you have to refresh like I just did. So this is showing you here what where all my div tags are. If you notice, this is the size of my div tag, right? I don't know if you guys can see it the same way. Isn't that interesting? You're seeing something different than me. A little bit, yeah. Uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is the size of my div, and you notice the div starts here, and there's a bit of a, a break, and this one goes down here, right? So my, my text is certainly centered, right? I have 10 sorry, 5 and 5, and 2, right? I'm specifying a, a, an object that's 150 by 150, but I'm also at the large uh, version of my, my site. If I go small, right, it doesn't change, if you notice. The size of my logo changes to be too small. I don't like that, right? But my proportions, the amount of columns I have allocated to each of these things hasn't changed, right? Now, I'm also using some text in here, and the texts, by the way, um, there's nothing in there. There's not a paragraph tag or anything, just placeholder, placeholder images right now. To illustrate this better, right, instead of text, let's say I had a couple more um, images here to represent my, my, uh, my buttons, right? I don't have buttons. And a couple of buttons over here, right, to, to illustrate some other buttons to create my nav, right? Let's just do that. Or I could use the button classes that are built into Foundation 2. I could do that, or the nav classes that are built into Foundation. But for now, let's just use some images. All right, so I'm going to go back to index. And instead of my text lives here, I want to create some space, right? So here's I'm just going to create some space in here now, right? As you can see, so there's only these divisions. I'm going to create another uh, couple of images that I'm going to put next to each other. Right? And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second, I'm going to create a nested row, right, within these five columns, small five columns text center, right? Um, let's take away the text center class for both of them, right? So I want you to see what these things do, right? And I want you to, I want to put in my first uh, placeholder image. I'm going to say place, actually, let's put the row in there. So div with a class of row, right? Here it is. And so this is a this is a, a nested row within these things. And this row can have 12 columns now, right? So I want to specify that each of my images is going to be within, within its own uh, uh, divider or uh, section. So my first one is going to have a class of small, right, six and columns. Right? And the other one is also going to be small, six columns. So far, I've only specified small. Bear with me while I do all this, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So here's a couple of more of these. And just to be balanced, I'm going to take these same, uh, the same structure here, right, for my rows and my columns, and plop it in here. So now I have two nested rows within the rows. 
just to be clear about what this does, before I put my images in here, let's let us refresh my screen, right? So if you notice, there's a bunch of images on the top and on the bottom, right? If you notice, and um, they're all piled together right now because there's no structure to them whatsoever. Let's put our images in here. So you get my meaning. So now I want to add in here in these two things. I'm just going to undo, right, for a second. And in here I'm going to put a uh, place, and I'm going to put images about around um, smaller images, let's say. Let's say uh, there's two of them. I'm going to say 50 by 100, or 100 by 50, actually. Right, so this is the first one, and again, in order for me to make this work, it's got to be on its own its own uh, level. So place uh, 100 by 50, right? I'm just going to take this and copy it and put it in here, and make give it its own space. There it is. Okay, and if I take this whole thing again, this whole row and um, structure. So there's a couple of placeholders. You're going to see there's an issue, right? But the great thing is I've got two nested rows within my row, right? But there is an issue. Here they are, right? My buttons are cool, but this is not what I want. If I go to small, this maintains my the size of my images. If I once I go to small, if you notice. The responsive design framework works in that they, the images shrink down, which is cool, but not what not optimal, right? For me, as I move from large to small. Once I put some commands for large, like right now I have all this just small, right? Small six columns. If I want the same or uh, approximately the same things for large, right? I'm not going to put um, more the columns I'm already get that's my class that's coming in here but I do want to put the large same thing so say for large six if I want to make it the exact same right so if I say large six and if I put them in here like this so for large and for small it doesn't matter it's the same and for large and for small large five large and for small I'm, I'm talking about both screen sizes right just from a design perspective, I want you to understand what we're doing here, right? And the same thing goes for large here, right? I'm going to fix that. I know you guys saw it right here. Um, I know for large screen sizes, I want the large one, 5 and 2 is, is, uh, is 7 and 5 is 12. They all have to add up, and I can modify this in a second. Okay. Now, this shouldn't make any appreciable difference to my code, but let us see. So again, I'm going to refresh. Sometimes you need to refresh a couple times. I'm going to close some of these other instances down. And when I when I change the size of my page, again, cutting across, it's the same, right? Because large, my large size and my small size are the same. And the reason why I'm getting my float right and float left up and down is because I haven't specified what these things are. What, what is this thing? Is it an article? Is it an aside? And if it is, that would be probably a better indicator of what that is in here as opposed to a row, right? So I've got two rows. i got two nested rows here, a row here and a row here. But I don't have to use the row, right? I just have to use the class of row inside my div, right? It doesn't have to be a div. I mean, it could be a row inside my aside, right? So in that, right? Instead of making this a, uh, a div, I can change this to an aside, right? And when I do that, of course, um, Visual Studio is, is quick enough to change the uh, closing uh, tag as well. Let's see what it does when I do this. So I have two asides, one on one side, one with the other, and I've got a couple of rows. This is without doing any of my own custom CSS. I could fix this with my own CSS, by the way, if it's not working the way I want. But why? If it's there for me. And if I refresh, still no difference. This is still uh, hugging this side, but this part, uh, because it's um, it's it's on to the right, isn't isn't doing what I want. But oh, notice one more thing. 
see how the images float to the left, right? Even though they're inside their own row and they're they're inside their own columns, they still float to the left of their of this these little uh, containers, right? If you want them centered, then you got to use centered, like small centered or large centered or whatever, right? Each one of them has um, default margins. So here's my margins, or padding, if you will, between the two, uh, between each of the containers. It doesn't have bottom, but for the sides, it has some default values for the sides, right? And the other thing is, if you notice something else, the reason why I'm losing control here, I am losing control, but the reason why I'm losing control is because I only have one row in here, right? For both my columns, and because I have, again, this is this column here is broken out into uh, one row, and I need to, to to put two nested rows, one that's on top of this one that has some empty space, so I can I can push these ones down, right? Because what I really want is for my my logo to float between all this stuff, right? That's what I really want, and for this this for it to be down here, right? Not all the way down here though. Right, this isn't exactly responding. This part here should be up here. Right, again, I can use some built-in classes if I go back to the foundation framework. Let's take a look and see if I have any helper classes that can help me out right, without me having to write anything. Right. If I go into my grid, this is my grid, I can turn visibility off and on depending on the size of my screen. This is an important piece. right? So I can kind of say something like, um, this is only showed in medium and large screens, um, but if I go to a small screen, if I change the size of my screen, see how this, the, the words change, right? So I can choose visibility on and off for different items, like I said to you before. So if I want to turn off my GitHub link on a small screen, and if it's a button instead of a nav bar, I'm just using buttons for now, right? I could do that. I can just say, don't show it on my small screen. Just make it disappear, right? Um, so that's one control I have. I can also add in uh, panels if I want to, or uh, it does touch detection and all kinds of other stuff that I'm not really going to detail here. Um, let's take a look at some other things first from, for the structure. So I want to see if I can show you more things. Here's some utility classes. So um, some float classes are really important. So there's left and right. I can use those things. And um, it says to clear floats, add the clear fix, clear fix image to my uh, uh, to the floating, right? So if I maybe clear fix is going to uh, fix my problem, but I can also do things like float right, which is really what I want to do with my my first column, and float left. I can use both those things, right and left, with my uh, uh, with my problem that I've got over here, right? So what I'm saying is. And without using it, this is looks looking pretty convoluted already, right? My row, this row here that I've got going on, which is nested with inside inside of this thing, right? What I want this to do is I want this thing to float, right? This um, this large five columns, right? Everything that's in this large five columns, I want it to float left, right? That's what I want. And the same thing goes with my these large five columns, I want this to float right, right? I don't want to touch my logo in the center, right? So let's see if that made any change to what I had to do. So I'm going to go back to foundation and, ref and refresh. I don't really get an appreciable change because I've got, it's already kind of floating right and floating left. Let me see if I can increase my screen size if that makes any difference and it won't, right? If I was to take away this piece, it would almost look like what I want. Right? But I want these other, these other images up here is what I want to do. So that didn't really fix me. That's a problem. I still got this problem. I'm going to fix it though. How do we do it? So that's definitely one. I can also choose, um, I can add for different boxes, like for example for my, uh, I can create a box, a rounded box uh, for different things. For example, um, I can choose a progress box or a button class of button uh, for, my, for my image as opposed to the images that I have there. It's not going to help me. It's still going to put the buttons on the right hand side. My text align class, as I kind of showed you, it only aligns the text, right? Not the alignment for
for the stuff that's in there, right? So there's different kinds of text align uh, functions. I can also hide an element or show it, right? Display it basically replaces the uh, the CSS with display is equal to none, right? So that's definitely you can hide or show an element uh, in there. So that doesn't these utility classes are neat, right? But it really doesn't um, help me. Right to left support. What this does is it allows you to change the direction of your of your text. So if you're in another language, um, that's really really cool. It allows you to move things around. But one of the things I was looking for is the ability for you to change your um, uh, your the order source order around and the source order. Like for example, if I want to um, pull in my uh, both of my navs on the other side, right? So I want my my source order to change. I want my logo to be on the other side. I can pull and push. I can use the pull and push command, right? And that's again, these are all this is all part of uh, foundation, right? And if you go through the docs, it'll tell you how all this stuff works. Now, someone said to me, I, I got an email from one of you guys. I won't name who. And you said, Tom, I don't like foundation. Can I use something else? Can I use Bootstrap? Sure, you can use Bootstrap. You can use another responsive framework, not a problem. What I don't want you to use is, like I said before, is WordPress, uh, some kind of CMS, Drupal with a PHP backend, right? Because we're not going to do PHP in this course, right? We're not using PHP. We're going to use Node, right? So if you did that now, because remember, everything we're doing with this portfolio site, we're going to build on. Right, so when we do things like uh, Angular MVC, and we're going to add in things like um, other uh, pieces, piece parts of this, like Node, it'll clash uh, with something like a WordPress or a Drupal or something else because they use PHP on the back end. Right, so please don't do that. Please don't use any CMS, uh, especially not Ruby on Rails or anything like that. Um, we want to use um, our own responsive framework, uh, and again, you can choose Foundation or others. There's others that are out there as well. Um, if you have a question, if, if it's okay or not, please send me a note, right? Send me a note saying, Tom, is this framework okay as opposed to using foundation? Uh, can I do this or not? So again, I could, going back to this, if I want to, so this didn't really help me out, this uh, left as an example or right. Um, it, didn't, it didn't help me out. If I went, if I change this to right though, right? And it says there's also right align, right small, um, and so on, right submenu. Um, if I just say right for both, I wonder what that would do. Let's take a look. So I'm just going to refresh. And yeah, that's what I thought it would do. See, it pushes this to the right. Both go to the right. And this is great, but I would like this to be abutted with this thing here. And the reason why we're having this issue is because remember how HTML works, right? HTML works in that. We want to pull, uh, pull this back by two, right? And it does source order. So the source order works like this. Here's the front part. This is the first piece. And if I push it to the right, it's going to order that first thing. Then it's going to do the logo, and then it's going to do this one. Well, guess what? Unless I say this is an aside or something, it's going to push the logo on the on the on the, the bottom. Here's another example. Let's go back. So I want you guys to figure out what I can do, right, with this without me telling you how to do it. Because you're going to try and figure out this custom stuff yourself anyway, right, if you're using Foundation. And I won't be around to show you it. So let's say, example would be, here's my aside. This is my aside. I've called it an aside. I'm going to put this back into a div. It didn't really do anything for us, right, as an example. What if I was to call this an article, right? Does that do anything? Because remember, articles and asides, they have different styling assigned to them according to uh, basic style rules, right? So let's take a look and see what that does. Stop it. I'm going to re refresh it. And I'm going to refresh the screen. So it really doesn't do anything, right? So articles, the sides, my div tags, they just work the exact same way. There's no um, appreciable difference as to what they work like. Okay? This is neat. How about if I um, if I took away this this second piece over here altogether, and I'm just going to wipe it out with um, by just de deleting it for now. I'm going to hold it in memory with a with a cut. Now I've got a problem. I've got five columns for one, 
and two columns for the other, which means I really need to go seven columns with this placeholder image if I want it to be balanced. Or keep it two, but I made this a ten. So let's make this ten for now, just so we balance. This is the outer row, right? The outer row is here. And if you notice, this is the inner row right here. From here to here is the inner row. The inner row still has six and six. That's not going to change. I've just changed my outer balance, right, to 10 and 2. Okay? Yes. Let's see what happens. So it's going to be on the right, and my, my uh, logo will be on the left, right? If things go well, it's going to change from this to this. Is that what I wanted? Right? Here's 10, right? And here's this 2. But shouldn't be over here, right? I'm making it 150 by 150. If I go back down to here to small, it keeps it the same proportions, right? Doesn't matter whether I'm big or small. I've got my uh, my columns, but if you notice, it's the way I've written it. It still appears in the center because again. When I start typing, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Here's, don't worry about this stuff in here, the stuff that's in the inner row. You want to care about the stuff that's in the outer row, these other div. The outer divs, right, are everything that's here and here, right? If I start typing large, so make a space here, go large, right, and I, say, I go dash, I can actually go down from a code ending perspective and look. There's large block grid, I can do that, large center, large offset, offset pushes, it gives, it take, takes up the space of these uh, rows, as an example, and adds uh, a buffer between the two, uh, the rows, based on where you put the offset. If you put it at the beginning, the first element, it'll push it to the left. If you put it in the, in the middle, it'll push it to the right, right? I'll explain that in a second. So large offset, large only text center, like, Here's large poll, right? Large poll, and there's also large push. Well, what push does is says, push these things over to the other side, or pull this thing over to this side. So what I really want to do, because I've set up my my source, so this is all about source order here. My my large uh, columns, my placeholder image, right, from my uh, for my row, if you notice, is first, and it's taking up ten columns, right? But what I want to do is I want to, I want to push this over two, and I want to pull the one, the other one over ten. So this is how I can do it. I can say, large, push, two, right? And I can say, when only in large, large, pull, ten. If I save that and go back to here and refresh it, where the hell did my thing go, right? It pushed it and pulled it, is what it did. If you notice, this is right outside the column, uh, the column width right now. Because this is 5 and 5, I've pushed it 2, so it goes to the right-hand side. And the other reason why it does that is because, if you notice, I, I've also combined it with a right, right, which I shouldn't do from a source order perspective. Right? Small center, let's leave alone. That doesn't affect large. I could take it away. That's probably one of my issues as well. If I take this away, this small centered, right? Let's take it away and do one thing at a time, right? And we'll stop here after this example of the video. And here's the, here it is, right? So this is cool. This is what I wanted, right? I want to use two here. Remember, I've defined this first, so this should actually be over on this side. And I've got this one, and it's on, and it's, uh, it's on the other side. If I take the, the pull and push away, the pull and push away. So here's my push. I'll take that away. And here's my pull. I'll take this away. And I refresh. It goes the other way, right? So I can put my logo on one side or the other. But I want my stuff on the other side, for darn <laughs> sake. How do I get it there, right? Let's try it again. So I've got my, it's three columns. I want, I want a three-column format, right? That's what I'm trying to do. 
So here's this stuff. Here's my my inner row. It's not. It's causing me uh, uh, issues. I want to go five and five here for now, right? This is what I want to do, just like we did last time. And I want to take this div, which is this, right? And by the way, I got to make some space because this div. I'll, I'll separate them. Here's the one row. Here's the other row. So first row, second row, and the third row will be down here, right? I want to take this stuff here, all this stuff here, right, and put it here again, right, without any kind of centering or anything like that, right? I'm going to get that same problem, right, because what of the source order of how it works, right, except I don't. I don't because I haven't centered, which is the issue, my problem, my, my, my thing here. This is good. It's almost good. But I got a problem. I don't want this up here, although the badge might look okay like this. My design wasn't like that, right? My design was like this, right? Where these things are down here, right? So I've got to put the stuff up here to float down, right? Which means I got to separate it with another row. So for our assignment, if something is not working, can you change the? <laughs> no. Change the design. Yeah. <laughs> You could, I, yeah, oh yeah, I could change my design now and say, guys, you know what? I can't make it work, so I'm just going to put the stuff down. What if the client wanted it that way? Right? Not in two weeks, though. Not in two weeks. Um, I would accept it. I wouldn't know, right? So the, the answer is I wouldn't know, right? If you changed your, you change your wireframe so they look like the way you wanted it, I wouldn't know, right? The exercise here is not for you to be accurate necessarily, but to do this stuff, right? To set up a plan. Put everything together. I'd love for you to be accurate. I'd love for you to be able to do things properly, but I wouldn't know really, right? I mean, you know, the only thing I could tell is that here's your external document with your power, with your wireframes. Hey, they look identical to the site. You, so you're an match. expert, right? They so match them. it should match, right? But if it doesn't match, you can put a note saying this is my original design, and this is what we ended up getting to, right? Which is fine too. I'll be, I'll accept that. I wouldn't, it, guys. Sometimes you know, it doesn't go. Everything doesn't go exactly to plan, right? Yeah. Like you said, sometimes it's time. Sometimes for you to be as accurate as you want, it takes an extra week to figure out things or whatever. Uh, like right now, we've only done this for about an hour and a bit, and I'm still struggling with trying to get this thing using this framework without using my own CSS. I want to do it. I want to go in there and say, take this and put it here, which I could totally do, right? But I don't want to do that. I want to use the, the framework because once I do that, it'll affect my responsive, the responsive nature of my design. I don't want that. I want, I want the, the CSS media queries to do it all for me that's built into uh, foundation. So let's end it there for now.